We are excited about having them here. It's the last, wow. Can you believe it's the last Tuesday, the last Tuesday of the month, Diane Garrison? Last Tuesday of the month. And then what's his topic? The big picture blueprint. He hails from San Diego, California, single father, made his decisions. For those that know, he'll probably tell his background, he was in IT, traveling all over the country, and he's built a big organization. Without further ado, from the southern part of California, the great, the one and only, Mr. Julian Lewis, regional director. <laughs> Good morning, sir. It's great to see you on the call today. Good morning, everyone. Um, before I get started, I just want to show my appreciation for Mr. Al Thomas uh, as a friend, as a leader, and a mentor. He's been uh, he's been extremely important in my life. Uh, he's he's been there ever since I got involved with the company. And as we've gotten closer, uh, you know, I can see why he's such an incredible individual. And people, you know, they look at the business, they they look at uh, what he's been able to accomplish. And sometimes I think people try to separate that from the man. And I don't see that happening without the man that he hit, that he is. So, Mr. Thomas, I thank you for everything that you do for me, myself, um, my family, and for for our team and the company. So, thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, just to give you a brief background on me so we're not complete strangers some of you know who i am some of us have met in person some of us have gotten to hang out some of us uh, might actually be hanging out in the rain in florida so that's pretty cool but i, I will tell you uh, prior to getting involved with this company i was a senior systems engineer and i was working roughly 80 to 90 hours a week uh, at my job i was averaging 50 to 60 flights a year which put me in a situation where i really didn't have a lot of time for myself and my family but good fortune came my way i was introduced to this company by my first mentor in this industry who shared with me a system that allowed me to replace my six-figure income and enabled me to come home to my family. But most importantly, I was able to become the type of father that I felt my daughter deserved. Uh, you know, and, and really a lot of the blessings that I have today is, is having the opportunity to get involved with this company, meet great people, uh, fall in love with personal development, and, and become the best version of myself I could for for my for the people that I love and for my team and in doing so it allowed me to see things clearly and and I want to talk about leadership today we this is a part two from last week uh, hopefully you were able to see last week's training and if not I highly recommend going to the Destiny International um, uh, channel on YouTube and taking a look at that. But this morning, we wanna talk a little bit about what, what leadership looks like and, and what it means to be a leader because there's so many, so many people that throw around the word leader, they throw around uh, um, coaching, they throw around all of these things and, and, and not everything is the same and not everything is effective. And I, want, I wanna uh, talk about it because if we, we talk about coaching we usually talk about teams and teams usually looks like sports and and if you look at the nfl or the nba uh every single one of the teams if you if you if you add up if you look at uh major league baseball every single one of those teams they have one goal in common does anyone know what it is you can put it in the chat because i can't i'm great at reading lips but not as great as you think so if you put it in the chat i'll be able to see what you're saying but that to win, right? It's a three letter word, right? It's to win. But let me ask you a question. If, if their goal is to win, if your goal is to win, if, if, you, if, you're, if you're a leader, you're a coach, you have a team and the goal is to win, what do you, how do you win? What do you focus on to win? What do you focus on to win? Oh yeah, it takes teamwork, but what do you focus on to win? Do you focus on winning? Is that what we do? Is it we do we focus on if we want to win? Do we focus on winning? Who thinks? Give it a thumbs up or a yes if you think that in order to win you got to focus on winning. Thumbs up. Put in the chat if if, if you see if you believe you got to focus on winning to win. Okay, right, because um, I see some thumbs ups. I, I see some thumbs up. I see all the things habits. I see a lot of things that people say you need to focus on. And the truth is a lot of people, now that I'm asking you questions, people are thinking about it. It's like, wait, well, yeah, first, the first, the first thought is yes, you focus on winning. But now people are starting to think a little bit because I asked a question, all right? First thing I want, I want to recommend before I get into the training, uh, 
get great at asking yourself questions. Start, start, to, start to be observant and ask yourself questions. Why? Okay, if I want to win, what do I focus on? Because I hear so many people, they're, they're gung-ho. Yeah, you focus on winning. You focus on getting IBOs. You focus on getting customers. If you just throw in enough business owners and, and customers, you'll win. Yeah, no, that's not true. What you'll have is a, a, what we call churn and burn, which, which will ultimately lead to you burning out because people aren't staying. So when, when you have someone that's focused, all of these, all of these different players in, in these different teams that I mentioned, the NFL, the NBA, uh, Major League Baseball, every single one of them have a goal to win their thing, right? The World Series or the, the Super Bowl. One of my, one of my good friends, um, Brian Hall, he won the Super Bowl 10 years ago with the Baltimore Ravens, okay? And we had a good conversation about this recently. And do, do you guys know that every single team has a goal to win their thing, their championship? But how many teams actually win the championship each year? Interesting. One. So does that mean all the other teams go into depression? So if all the teams, only one wins it, then can we agree that maybe focusing on winning it might not be the best strategy for actually winning it? What if that was the case? I wanna get to SVP, I wanna get to SVP. Great, what does that actually look like? What is getting to RD, RVP actually look like? And when I say, what does it look like? I'm talking about the process. And, 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 and I mentioned this last week, most people are focused way too much on the fruit instead of the root. And here's the irony. In everything that's created, you cannot create the root, or you cannot create the fruit. Even when we plant, you know, the miracle Jim Rome said is that uh, is 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 God grows the tree and fruit comes from it. And you could sit up all night and try to figure out how that works, and you won't be able to figure it out. But that's not our job. Our job in the process is to do what is to follow the process, is to do the work. And you can't just do the work, you gotta fall in love with the work. So when leaders become focused on the fruit instead of the root and worry about the outcome instead of the process of developing team members, they may survive in the short run, but they will not thrive in the long run. Self-serving leaders don't leave legacies that changed the world for the better. They may win a few championships. They may even get to SVP. They may make a little bit of money and achieve some fame in the short run, but true greatness is achieved when a leader brings out the greatness in others. Guys, I've seen it, and I'm not gonna even mention names. I've seen it in this company. I've seen, I've seen leaders that people get excited about that even cross the stage as Circle of Champions members. Here today, gone tomorrow, because they made it about themselves. It was a me, me, me type of a play versus a we, we, we type of a play. And you can, you can tell because they'll, they'll, they'll speak of I, 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 even in their doing trainings on stage. And so it's important to ask yourself a question. What am I doing to serve my team and the people that I lead? Number one. Number two, how can I serve them to become the best versions of themselves? Are you actually asking yourself that? Number three, how can I demonstrate my commitment to them? Not my commitment to ACN, my commitment to them, their success. 
And here's what's crazy. And I know most of you have heard this before. You do not have to be great to serve, but you have to serve to be great because service to many leads to greatness. So the commitment starts with you. It starts at home. It starts with everything that your, your, your focus is. See, I had to learn when I first started, I thought this was about me. And then I realized the only way that me becomes, uh, the only way that the things that I want, the me gets taken care of, is if I take the focus off of me and I put the focus on we. Because a self-serving leader can never get to greatness. And we confuse it because we see someone get a few flashy things. We see them reach the top, top of the charts for a few times, or even maybe consistent, consistently for a season. And so we have to be very careful of who we're emulating and what type of leadership style we emulate because you may see the results, but the results won't last if the leader is focused on themselves. And so you wanna care about the work you do. You wanna surround yourself with people who care. You wanna show your team you care about them and you wanna build a team that cares about one another. When you do that, there's a strength that comes with it that will push you through and past your wins to create many rent wins in the future. And, and just remember this, when it comes to doing all of these things, no one's perfect. But when you really step out of yourself and you start to focus on uh, others, you get a clarity about what's, what, what's necessary. So let's take a look, in the, and this is all about uh, the big picture, but we have to start at the micro to, so we can look at the big picture in the macro. So let's take a look at enrolling an IBO. What is the purpose of enrolling a business partner? Is it to help you or is it to help them? Does anyone know? This is actually a trick question. I wanna see what, is, what you guys say. So I, I'm telling you it's a trick question. So now with that, help us both, help us both. I like it, I like it. It's to help us both. Now, can I be really just, I'm gonna be really transparent. Enrolling an IBO is to help you. It's to help you. Because who's in the cause first? You are. So is this your business? Yes. Do you have a vision of where you wanna go? Absolutely. So are you enrolling them in your vision? So you're actually enrolling them to help you. I, I'm, I'm doing this for a reason, because if you can get clear with this, clarity allows you to, to move faster and, and go further. You're enrolling IBOs to help you, but the only way that you can help yourself is by helping them become successful. But don't, don't, don't get it twisted. You're enrolling them to help yourself. If you forget that, then, you, then you're pretending that that doesn't apply in the business. See, because when you enroll people, you're able to leverage your efforts so that you can have more success with, less, with, with, with utilizing less of your time. Is this true, yes or no? So let's not pretend that we're enrolling them for both. We're enrolling them. Enrolling them helps you but the only way that you can have them be effective is to identify what they want and show them how to help themselves, right? So getting clear, clarity on that. So that means, again, it's, it's like the win. If we want the wins, we don't focus on the wins. If we want the wins, we focus on the process. We fall in love with the process. If we understand the process, and we, we, and we duplicate the process every single day, then we're gonna get the result of the win all the time. But if we focus on the win and we just try to get there 
however, whatever it takes without any, without any plan or reason, then every time we miss it, we fail, we get more depressed and more discouraged. So you know what I love? I love focusing on the process, getting excited about a process that I've hooked into my life so it becomes a part of my lifestyle so that by breathing and doing what I do on a day-to-day, by default, wins show up in my life because the wins are exciting in that point. See, it's the same thing when I'm working out. I don't, I don't work out to have a summer body. A summer body is a default result, a byproduct of me fitting workouts in my life as a part of my lifestyle. So I don't have to be discouraged when one little part of my ab doesn't show up in the summertime. It's going to show up every single summer because it's a part of my lifestyle. Winning is a part of your lifestyle if you focus on a process that becomes a part of your lifestyle. Leading people is a part of a lifestyle. In every aspect of my life, in everything that I do, in AC and outside of ACN, it's a part of what I do. Coaching is part of what I do in every single aspect of my life. It's something that I do with my daughter. It's something I do with friends. It's something that I do with people that reach out to me. It has to become a part of your lifestyle. What I'm, what I'm saying is, is that what we do is we, we try to use ACN like a tool or a thing. And I've heard people say ACN is a tool to get you to where you want to go. But most people aren't using that tool properly because they're looking at it as a thing you do versus a person you become. ACN is just an aspect of my life. It's not a thing that I do. It's who I am because of the way I operate. I don't have to think about prospecting. Why? Because I'm always talking to people. And I'm always figuring out a way and talking to people where I can add value to them based on the conversation we're having. Sometimes, sometimes it could be just a bit of advice. Sometimes it could be peaking them and enrolling them into the business. But if it's a part of what you're always doing, then you don't have to think about not doing it. Does that make sense, you guys? So these are, these are key things that are a part of mindset that leaders have. And if you, be, if you want to become a leader, then it has to become a part of your lifestyle. It's not just a title or a label that you have. In our organization, our goal is to be the most cohesive team in the world, in everything that I do, in any business that I operate. My goal, is to have our team be the most cohesive team in the world. And our mindset is to focus on the process of getting better every day. It's not about anything else because here's the truth. When that's the focus, surprise, wins show up. When that's the focus, surprise, awards happen recognition happens when that's the focus and you have to find a way i know you've heard this before but it's true you have to find a way to fall in love with the process ladies and gentlemen if you don't you can win short term but you won't win long term so finding a way means finding a way to hook the process into your life as habits that become a a lifestyle for you Day-to-day presentations is a lifestyle that you enjoy. Day-to-day customer acquisition is a lifestyle that you enjoy. And if you don't don't enjoy it yet, here's a question I need you to ask yourself, Diana. You need to ask Dave, Rick. Here's a question I'd ask you, Jackie. Ask yourself, how do I figure out a way to fit these components in every day so that I enjoy them? And start down that path because when you start enjoying to enjoy doing them every day then it's not work anymore and when it's not work anymore and it becomes fun the results come as a byproduct so this is a little shorter message today but i wanted to to, to close out the month with you thinking about that because there's a new month coming there's a there's at the end of this month we're blessed to have the event happening at the end of the week and at the end of the month. And in that is new beginnings coming into October. And you have an opportunity to have new beginnings, new month, 
new results with a renewed mindset and focusing on the right things. So start asking yourself questions so that you can get to the bottom of it and focus on the root and not the fruit. And if you do, if you prepare and you nurture and you focus on the root, ultimately the tree will grow and it will produce the fruit as a byproduct of all the work and the process you're doing. So with that, Mr. Thomas, I will turn the call back over to you, sir.